disregarding the potential dangers posed by wild animals, is a lesson learned when it's too late. In the heart of the wild, where mountains touch the sky and rivers weave tales of ancient landscapes, there roams a majestic force of nature, the grizzly bear. While not all bears are deemed threatening, it's advisable to steer clear of grizzlies, given their imposing size and robust physical builds, which can instill a sense of unease. While they typically refrain from attacking unless provoked or taken by surprise, female grizzlies can turn aggressive when their cubs are perceived to be in jeopardy. Please click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Horrific Animal Disasters. The grizzly, situated at the apex of the food chain, scientifically known as Ursus arctos horribilis, these large mammals are native to North America. These creatures favor a diet comprising leaves, berries, fruits, roots, and nuts. Additionally, they can ingest smaller mammals such as rats or moose. Despite their large stature, they exhibit impressive speed, excelling in both short sprints and long-distance running, with the ability to cover up to 30 miles or 48 kilometers in an hour. They can pose a lethal danger when provoked or sensing a threat to their offspring. Grizzly bears are known for their distinctive hump on their shoulders, which is a powerful muscle mass. They have a concave facial profile, smaller ears, and a more prominent shoulder hump compared to black bears. The fur on their bodies can range in color from blonde to dark brown, and the tips of their fur may appear grizzled, giving them their name. Adult male grizzly bears can weigh between 300 to 1,500 pounds, while females typically weigh between 200 to 700 pounds. They can stand on their hind legs, reaching heights up to 8 feet or 2.5 meters tall. Grizzly bears are powerful and potentially dangerous, but they generally avoid confrontations with humans. Human bear conflicts can arise when bears become accustomed to human food sources, leading to efforts to manage and mitigate such interaction. Glacier National Park is one area in North America where grizzlies roam in abundance. These bears roam across various ecosystems within the park, including alpine meadows, forests, and subalpine areas. The park has implemented measures to minimize human bear conflicts, including food storage regulations and educational programs to inform visitors about bear safety. Trail closures or warnings may be in place during certain times of the year or in specific areas where bear activity is more prevalent. Visitors are typically encouraged to carry bear spray, make noise to alert bears of their presence, and follow recommended safety guidelines. Due to the presence of grizzly bears, Visitors to Glacier National Park are advised to take these precautions to avoid negative encounters with wildlife. For Johan and Jenna Otter, their grizzly encounter would be a nightmare. Johan and Jenna Otter had made the journey from Escondido, California to Glacier National Park to commemorate Jenna's high school graduation as she prepared to embark on her upcoming studies at the University of California. Being avid hikers, the duo, often accompanied by Johan's wife and younger daughter, were used to long hikes and shared the passion of venturing into the wilderness. Jenna, with her passion for dance and excellent fitness, complimented Johan, a dedicated marathoner. Johan was excited to have his daughter join this trip with him. Their ambitious goal for this particular trip was to challenge themselves. On this day, they set their sights on the Grinnell Glacier, an approximately 11-mile or 18-kilometer round-trip hike. Arriving at the trailhead around 7 a.m., Johan had initially proposed an earlier start, but Jenna insisted on adhering to regular hours, especially in grizzly country. Noticing only one car in the parking lot, they knew of the trail's popularity and understood the need to commence their hike before larger groups joined. The trail commenced as a nature path, offering brochures for plant insights. Winding through a tree-filled grove passing Lake Josephine, they ascended switchbacks above the tree line. The terrain became rocky, with sparse shrubs on the slope. Despite a recent snowstorm, the sky had cleared and high clouds prevailed, creating ideal hiking conditions after a couple of hours on the trail. The two were engaged in conversation. Johan took his time filming a golden eagle while Jenna encouraged her dad to maintain their pace. Their aim was to reach Iceberg Lake later in the afternoon. They deliberated on how much further to go before the turnaround, roughly around 9 a.m with Jenna leading a few steps ahead. Things were going well for the father-daughter duo. They were enjoying one of the most beautiful hikes in America. Turning the corner, Jenna came face to face with a mama grizzly and fear instantly paralyzed her. 
Jenna saw the grizzly a second or two before I did. We were on the Grinnell Glacier Trail, and there was a 20-foot tall boulder sticking out. Jenna was about to walk around it when the bear turned the corner. She could have reached out and touched its snout. It was within five feet of her, and she could see it had two cubs. Jenna's first response was to run away. She took about two steps back toward me. I was still walking up, unaware of what was happening, until she shouted, Oh no, Johan said. The first thing Johan saw was a large furry creature charging straight at him. He recalled the fangs and claws vividly. Instinctively, Johan positioned himself in front of Jenna. His immediate reaction was to stand his ground and refrain from moving. The bear swiftly targeted Johan's left thigh, delivering a forceful bite. The bear's mouth clamped right onto the flesh. Johan looked down at the surreal scene unfolding before him. Initially, he questioned what it could be, perhaps a large badger? Soon after, the realization struck. It was a bear. In the midst of the attack, peculiar thoughts crossed Johan's mind, including the observation that the bear wasn't as large as he had imagined. Another bite followed this time on his leg. After the bear attacked Johan, he found himself unable to fight back in the mere half second of impact as he was swiftly thrown off his feet. Although he knew the smart move was to assume the fetal position, time didn't allow for it. At that moment, Johan realized that his vital organs were exposed. Thrown around by the bear, Johan assessed the situation and decided that getting off the slope was the best course of action. Freeing himself from the bear's jaws, he rolled down a steep embankment, navigating rocks and bushes in a tumultuous tumble of about 20 feet or 6 meters. Coming to a stop, Johan caught his breath, only to face the harsh reality that he was alone. No bear, no Jenna. The two were together, and that wasn't a good sign. Carrying a day pack with essential items, including a camera, water, and snacks, Johan discovered that the Bear spray, initially in the loose mesh side pocket, had been knocked out when the grizzly first attacked. Jenna, upon seeing the bear spray on the trail, picked it up. Unfortunately, unaware of the safety lever, she couldn't deploy it in time when the bear charged at her. Jenna fainted in shock, falling about 50 feet or 15 meters off trail in a different direction from Johan. She regained consciousness halfway through the fall, hitting her butt and head on rocks, Although she woke up, she also discovered she had broken her back. I yelled, Jenna, come down here, it's safe. She never heard me, but the bear did. The minute I yelled, I saw the bear looking down. It started running right at me. I went into a fetal position and the bear latched onto my pack, lifting me up and down like I weighed nothing. I'm six foot one and 185 pounds, Johan recalled. Johan found himself screaming, and a crucial realization struck him. Jenna, lacking a backpack, would be defenseless if the bear turned its attention to her. Understanding the need to divert the bear's focus, Johan knew he had to keep the threat on himself. His continued screaming served as a method to ensure the bear stayed focused on him, recognizing that he could protect himself, but Jenna lacked the additional layer of protection provided by a backpack. In the midst of the bear attack, Johan found himself in the creature's jaws half the time, witnessing the gruesome sight of his flesh being pulled without feeling any immediate pain. Recognizing the severity of the situation as blood became visible, he made a swift decision to throw himself away from the bear, plummeting an additional 30 feet. Landing face up, Johan, in an unplanned move, found the bear returning on top of him. Facing the formidable creature, Johan instinctively grabbed the bear by the throat, acknowledging its immense strength. In an attempt to deter the bear, he seized a rock, intending to strike its nose. Unaware of the presence of cubs, Johan realized the rock was fragile and hitting the bear might intensify its aggression. Transitioning into protective mode, the bear became more aggressive, gnawing, scratching Johan's head, and biting his right arm. Enduring face-to-face -face contact with the grizzly for three to five minutes, Johan remained focused on survival, primarily driven by the goal of safeguarding Jenna. The critical moment arrived when he felt a tooth penetrating the base of his skull. Accompanied by a cracking sound and intense pressure, the bear was biting into his skull. Johan decided he needed to escape the situation. Launching himself downhill once again, he fell another 20 feet and came to a stop in a rock chute on the edge of a cliff. 
Positioned with his feet on rocks, back against the mountain, and with rock outcroppings above him, Johann faced a precarious situation. Below him was a significant drop of several hundred feet. The bear, after assessing the situation, eventually walked away without further confrontation, leaving Johann battered but prepared to defend himself if necessary. Then I heard Jenna scream. That was the worst sound I've ever heard. The bear had gone back to Jenna, he recalled. When the bear lunged at Jenna, Johann observed her instinctive response, extending her hands and grabbing the bear around the throat. Realizing the need to change tactics, Jenna swiftly transitioned into playing dead, curling up in the fetal position. Despite the bear biting her face and shoulder, she maintained her composure, and the bear eventually retreated, presumably to retrieve its cubs. Following Jenna's initial scream, Johan, not hearing further sounds, assumed the bear had left her. However, he refrained from making any noise himself, fearing the bear might return to him. In his battered state, he couldn't offer assistance to Jenna. Assessing his wounds, Johan checked for arterial bleeds and discovered the severity of his injuries, including a head wound that exposed bone. Covering his left eye to test the vision in his right eye, which had been clawed, he managed to make out Grinnell Lake. After a brief wait, Johan called out to Jenna, and she responded immediately with a strong voice, bringing relief to him. Jenna, having crawled under some bushes next to a rock for protection, was about 30 feet away. Johan's first concern was about her eyes, and Jenna reassured him that they were fine despite wounds on her face and shoulder. Johan crawled to a ledge, leaving behind his backpack and a trail of blood. To minimize the visibility of his injuries, he pulled the hood of his jacket over his head, creating a makeshift seal to stop the bleeding. Johan and Jenna, positioned only 30 feet or 9 meters apart, found themselves too weak to reach each other. During the subsequent 45 minutes, they vociferously called for help. A man descending the mountain with wide open eyes caught their attention, prompting his wife to locate a ranger-led group on its way to the glacier. The ranger radioed for assistance, initiating a prolonged two-hour wait until medical personnel reached them. Passers-by, undeterred by their bloody state, provided support by retrieving Johan's backpack and camera and covering them with jackets. Upon the arrival of the other rangers, immediate treatment commenced, yet it took an additional four hours for a helicopter to lift them out. Due to the severity of their injuries, rescuers hesitated to move them and Johan did not lay eyes on Jenna until over a week later, following his surgery. In retrospect, this proved beneficial, as Johan was confronted with images of his bloodied appearance and exposed skull. Johan's blood pressure plummeted, and he lost approximately half of his blood. While contending with various injuries, pain was not the foremost concern. Grateful to see people, Johan was transported to Kalispell Regional Medical Center, where x-rays revealed three fractures in his neck, necessitating immobilization. Subsequently, he was flown to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle, undergoing seven hours of surgery. Jenna remained in Kalispell, receiving care from a renowned physician specializing in bear bites. Despite potential exposure to exotic parasites, both miraculously avoided infections. Johann's extensive injuries included a significant degloving of about 60% of his head, a fractured eye socket, a snapped right wrist, a broken nose, two fractured vertebrae, and numerous bite wounds. Jenna sustained two stable fractures in her back, significant bites on her head and shoulder, and a severe ankle laceration nearly reaching the Achilles tendon. Reflecting on the bear attack, Johan acknowledges a changed perception of bears, recognizing their capacity for harm. However, he emphasizes the importance of their presence in the ecosystem, particularly grizzlies symbolizing true American wilderness. Despite the surgeries, Jenna made a full recovery and was able to continue her college studies. Johann Otter's recovery from the bear attack was lengthy, but he achieved significant progress. In June of 2008, Johann successfully completed a marathon, marking a pivotal milestone in his journey. Overcoming this marathon served as a crucial barrier that Johann needed to surmount, affirming his physical restoration and a return to a sense of self. Johann Otter has some unfinished business, and that involves revisiting the exact location of the bear attack alongside the rangers who assisted them. The plan is to proceed to Grinnell Glacier from there. Johan doesn't harbor fear about returning to the wilderness. It's merely a personal undertaking he feels compelled to complete. Following the attack, park officials temporarily closed all trails in the area, 
and conducted a search for the otter's grizzly, which proved unsuccessful. Nevertheless, rangers had determined that the bear had acted defensively and shouldn't be euthanized if located. As of the latest update, there have been no reported encounters on the Grinnell Glacier Trail since the incident. These powerful beings with fur as golden as the sunlight filtering through the trees embody resilience and strength. They are guardians of the untamed, symbols of the wilderness's enduring spirit. While grizzly bear attacks are rare, knowing how to respond is essential if you find yourself in such a situation. Try to remain calm and avoid making sudden movements. Don't run as this may trigger the bear's predatory instincts. Determine whether the bear is acting defensively or as a threat. If the bear is defensive, as in protecting cubs, food, or personal space, it may stop the attack once it perceives no threat. Speak to the bear in a calm and low voice. Let the bear know you're human by talking and waving your arms. Back away slowly, keeping an eye on the bear. Do not turn your back. If the bear charges and makes contact, playing dead is often the best strategy for grizzly bears. Lie flat on your stomach. Cover the back of your neck with your hands. Spread your legs to make it harder for the bear to turn you over and remain as still as possible. Stay in this position until you are sure the bear has left the area. If the bear continues to attack and you're dealing with a grizzly, fight back with everything you have. Use bear spray if available. Aim for the bear's face, particularly the eyes and nose. Make noise while hiking, especially in areas with dense vegetation or near streams where bears might not hear you coming. Bears are less likely to approach a group of people, so try to travel in groups when in bear country. Be bear aware. Educate yourself about bear behavior habitats and signs of their presence. Follow park regulations and guidelines for bear encounters. Remember that each bear encounter is unique and the appropriate response may vary. It's crucial to be prepared, stay informed, and prioritize safety when venturing into bear country. Crucial tips so you can survive a horrific animal disaster.